Okay, welcome back to part two of creating an animated walk cycle using the puppet tool in Adobe After Effects. So once you have After Effects open, I'm just going to double click in the project window here and I'm going to find my uh, character Photoshop file on the desktop. Open that. This is important here. So if the default option is footage, it's going to merge all the layers. So let's change that from footage to composition and make sure editable layer styles is checked off. Press OK. And now we see we have a folder filled with each of our layers from Photoshop and a composition. So when I open the composition, I can see that each of my layers is separated in After Effects. So to animate this, I'm going to make this uh, composition a little bit bigger. So under composition in the menu, composition settings, I'm just going to crank up the width quite a bit so I have some room for her to walk and also the height a little bit. And press OK. So before we start animating, we have to uh, set up a few more things here. So let's change the anchor points of each of these objects. So um, grab your pen behind tool up in the toolbar and go through each layer one at a time and click on the anchor point and just move it to the pivot point that it should be at. So the head should be right below the chin. If I click on the front arm, I'll move that up to the shoulder. Body is good about the belly button area. The back arm will go to the back arm shoulder. Body, this should be pelvis. Actually, I'll just rename that right now to pelvis. And then that should be just below the belly button or at the belt line. Front leg, top of the thigh, back leg, also top of the thigh. Oops, I accidentally dragged that above the pelvis. All right. Um, now the next thing we want to do, I'm just going to change over to my regular uh, move tool. And now we need to parent things together. So if I click on the head and move it around, it's moving the head on its own, which typically wouldn't happen with the human body. So the head will actually be connected to the body. So there's a little pick whip tool here. If I click and drag that to the body and release that, I see that it's now attached to the body. If I click and move the body, if I select that, now the head is attached. So let's go ahead and do that for the rest of the layers. So the front arm is also connected to the body. The body is connected to the pelvis. Back arm connected to the body. The pelvis will be the main uh, pivot point of the entire character, so that's not connected to anything. Front leg connected to the pelvis and back leg also to the pelvis. So now if I were to move the body, it moves the whole upper half. And if I move the pelvis, it moves the entire body. So now with the anchor points moved and everything parented correctly, we can go ahead and start animating this. I'm going to create a new solid layer and call it ground and change the color of it to a nice green for the grass and then just resize it and move it down to the bottom there and I'll move that ground layer behind everything so I can see your feet just as a reference for something for my character to walk on and also to lock that down uh, to make sure that ground layer isn't visible and any other compositions we move our character to. I'll just right click on the ground layer and change it to a guide layer. That way it recognizes it as a layer that's only visible in this composition. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in here and move down to the legs and uh, start animating the front and back. So shift click front and back leg hit P shift R on the keyboard to bring up position and rotation. Make sure your timeline is at the very beginning and just click off those stopwatches to turn on a keyframe. I only want my 
composition to be about one second. A walk cycle will take about one second. So just adjust yours. Zoom in a little bit. So now um, I can see I'm at frames and if I look at the end here, it's at one second, which is perfect. So with the position and rotation, uh, just grab your rotation tool in the tool panel and click on one leg at a time. So I'll do the front leg. Just rotate that out a little bit. Same with the back leg to make it look like she has a bit of a walking stance. And then move your timeline to the end to one second and turn on those keyframes. So we always want the first frame and the last frame to be the exact same in order to make a seamless walk cycle. Okay, so let's add some bend to this. So up in the tool panel, there's this puppet pin tool. If I click on that, I can start creating uh, some bends in here. So I'll choose just the front leg, do one leg at a time, and make your first point right at that anchor point. So if I click on it, it creates this mesh around the leg. Just look up in your mesh here, and if I were to increase expansion, it really uh, makes the area a lot bigger, which we don't want. So I'll just keep that at two. And for more details, you could crank up triangles. It just gives you more room to work with those pixels. If there's a lot less, it just makes that animation a bit choppier. So I'll keep the triangles at 450 and go down and put in the rest of my pins. So I have one at the hip, one at the knee, one at the ankle, one at the heel, the ball of the foot, and the tip of the toe. So you'll have all of those pins. So just grab one of those and make your bend. All right, so um, grab your back leg and do the same thing. Okay, there we are. So we have a bit of a bend. I'm just gonna grab my move tool here and click on shift click front and back legs and hit U on the keyboard to bring up all the, the keyframes that I've created. And with the front leg, I'm going to select all of those keyframes that I don't have at the end. Copy them, command C, move to the end and paste them and they will now have the beginning and end bend the exact same. So do that with the back leg as well. Okay, so now halfway in between We actually want to swap where these legs are. So with your move tool, I choose the front leg and just move that, drag it, hold shift on the keyboard to keep it perfectly in line to the front or the back hip anchor point and then choose your back leg and drag that over to the other side. Okay, so now since you've switched the legs over, we can readjust these legs with the puppet pin tool. So I'll grab the front leg and the puppet pin tool. And don't worry about any uh, deforming as you bring the points together the leg will end up coming together nicely.
All right, so now in between the middle frame and the first frame, we want to create that bend in the leg. So the knee will actually be coming quite high off the ground and bring the heel up off the ground as well. And then the same thing with the back leg as it's walking forward and a nice bend in the leg and the heel up off the ground. Now that's looking pretty realistic. You can make your adjustments as needed. I'm going to carry on and animate the arms. So same as the legs, highlight the front arm and the back arm. Open the rotation <clears throat> and, and bring your timeline back to the front. Turn on the rotation. Grab your rotation tool and just rotate one of these at a time and I can see the back arm is kind of going in front of the pelvis so I'll actually just drag that layer behind the pelvis so now it's going to be hiding behind her skirt and just bring out her arms a little ways drag your timeline to the end and create your keyframes and now grab the puppet pin tool and create that bend. So on the front arm, first pinpoint on the shoulder, elbow, and then wrist. And just make that nice bend there. Okay, and same thing with the back arm. Grab the puppet pin tool and make a point up on the shoulder, the elbow, and the wrist. And just make that bend in the arm. And then halfway through at about 15 frames, grab your rotation tool and just rotate the arms in opposite directions. The back arm will come backwards a little ways. Maybe you can just see the tips of her fingers, the front arm forward. You can see that the drop shadow effect hasn't taken the form of the puppet tool. So, so to edit that, with your arm selected, go up into your effect controls panel and under the puppet effect, just hit on transparent, check that off, and then it will hide that effect. And we could do that with the back arm as well. It might be distracting once we get a background on there. So before we add any details with the puppet pin tool, Let's click on our front and back arm and just hit U on the keyboard to bring up all of our keyframes. And with the puppet pin tool, copy and paste whatever's at the beginning at the end for both front and back arms. Oops. Now regardless, those arms are going to be in the same position. So halfway through, let's grab our puppet pin tool. Maybe make a little bit of an adjustment here. And with the front arm as she's swinging it down, you can maybe adjust the swing. So let's take a look at what that looks like.
That's looking pretty good. She's still a little bit stiff, so we can add a bit of animation to the head. Uh, choose the head layer, hit R to bring up the rotation. At the beginning of your timeline, turn on your stopwatch. Adjust the head. Maybe give it a little bit of a tilt. Move your timeline to the end. Make a new keyframe, so those keyframes are the same at the beginning and the end. Halfway through, we'll just rotate that head a little bit forward. So that's looking better. You can go through and add a bit more details if you'd like. For example, on the on her skirt, I could add some puppet pin points here to make her skirt a bit flowy. So at the very first keyframe, adjust that skirt, choose pelvis, hit U on the keyboard. I accidentally put my puppet pin points in her skirt uh, on the timeline before I had scrubbed to the front, so I'll just highlight these and delete them. And these ones at the beginning, I'll copy them, move to the end, and paste them. And then halfway through, again, just make an adjustment. And you could go through and add as many details as you'd like. I'm good with that for now. So that's looking pretty good. You've animated your character, you can move on to part three and learn how to make a parallax background animation and put your character into a scene. See you then.